to the Armenian genocide. I got the impression that, for example, the British government is not clever enough that they relied only on those imagined sources and those letters from friends or how they, they manage their foreign policies only based on this, what published on newspapers, or they had other sources and other evidences. Well, when you say the British government, I mean, we have to have Cause you said, uh, sorry, time you, and people and what you mean in the 1890s? 1890s, beginning no, of 20th based, century. The sources that I gave you are completely what the British government's policies were at the time. They're all based on those sources, yes. That's, of course, you got later on, that's a different thing. 1915, a, a colossally different situation. But for this now, this, this is a, a simpler one, easy to understand, and it's based on exactly those things. There are other councils. There's another missionary's child up here in, in Erzurum and in Graves as a British consul as well. There are other people that are involved in this. And there are, other, there are other times when Armenians are both killed and when Armenians do killing in the 1890s. But there, there's a limit to how much you can pack into an hour. I'm sorry, you just you okay. said, uh, I don't want to be long here. Okay. You said that government wouldn't check the figures they got from Sassoon. So that's why I'm asking the question. You mentioned the, uh, the word government, British government, and I'm sure they have archives which are open today and there are books published on those papers. And uh, the other thing, if you um, keep on separating Sassoon from 1915, then it's truly a sketch. It's not the whole image. Oh, it's not intended to be the yeah. image of the entire history of Turks and Armenians. No, of course not. Nothing. It's, but it is an indication of what was to come of the kind of prejudice and feeling and acceptance of false Well, statistics. you can see it in today's well, press as well. Me. In today's it's, press, sorry, me. when I you did, have technologies, right. when you have internet time. to have exact figures, but you have mistakes today. You couldn't expect people to have numbers in, do, in those days, and you could expect, couldn't expect to have other sources rather than letters. I, I think we probably have gone through enough, but let me yeah. just say this. I don't expect people to have statistics yeah. Quite the contrary. I expect people not to make them up and not to lie about statistics. I totally agree. That's okay. not okay. acceptable. Right. But so that's we're, we're so just some example. Maybe that's not the, next the whole question. truth. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Uh, one more here and then over here. Okay. I want to emphasize, please be brief and please direct the question to Professor McCarthy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a uh, I'm a student studying history. I'm a Turkish student in UK, and um, my uh, research interests are not Armenian questions. So I don't. Well, I I, have, I don't have any primary source. So I'm, I'm I don't I'm not an expert on this. I'm, I don't I don't know. Um, so and you said in the beginning that you won't talk about what actually happened, but how people talked talked about those happenings, etc. So I just want to reflect some of your rhetorical strategies. Uh, that how you um, represented those, and they they seemed very interesting is, for me. Because is, it, is this a question or a rhetorical commentary? Um, it is a question. Yeah, it's a question. You, you sound very much like my old speech teacher. Okay, I would say it's a, now yeah, it is a question. Problem was this. No, it's a question. I want to I want just to ask you about why uh, was it relevant that we saw all these Orientalist and um, colonialist caricatures and pictures and all these uh, um, the little uh, things that were uh, in the American press, which weren't really relevant about um, the, um, the, I mean, Orientalism in the 19th century wasn't about Turks, it wasn't about uh, the Armenians, it wasn't about Kurds, it was a much more general problem about the 19th century, about the imperial project of Europeans and also Americans. So you just selected some pictures made all this audience laugh and then continued about continued to uh, your your uh, I, I think findings I, I about your question so I, I don't I don't understand why that was uh, relevant to your first of all I'm not interested in orientalist paradigm I'm not but, interested but, in, but what I'm you not, but, not, sorry just let me just let me finish okay. uh, what you represented was not about uh, the Armenian question was about 19th century Orientalism. So, if you are not if you are not interested in Orientalism, then why why was it relevant for our purposes here? I'm not in any way interested in Orientalism or the Oriental the Orientalist question or the counter to that. I'm not gonna. Yes, yeah, sorry. You're done. Right. Right. Specifically, I'm interested 
in what lies were reported and I say very definitely that what is believed today and appears in many history books is based on what I showed you. That that is the reason. The prejudice, and as I say, I've gone out of my way to write more than 300 pages on the topic. So if you think that's because I'm considering Orientalism, I think you'll find that the term isn't even used in the book. So all I can say about your, your or Orientalism idea and whether I reflect or don't reflect the paradigm is it's not what I intend, and if I do, it's purely an accident. Just a little one, sorry. Um, thank you, Jim McCarthy, for coming. Um, at the beginning of your talk, you said that you were going to tell us about false allegations made against the Turks in the 1890s and then compare them to those made uh, in relation to the events of 1915. In actuality, your entire talk was about the 1890s and only in your conclusion did you mention the events of 1915 without making any substantiation whatsoever as to how the genocide of 1915 is just 1890s style falsehood. Is Given that your conclusion is that there was no genocide in 1915, don't you think that you should have dedicated at least some time to 1950 instead of just talking about the 1890s? Uh, number one, if I said that, if I said that, I really apologize because I never, as it said in the beginning, it said I was specifically talking about Sassoon. So did anyone else hear me say that? I don't believe I said anything like that, and I surely didn't intend to. Now, I've given, I've given a number of talks on the whole idea of genocide, on what happened in 1915, and some other time I'd be glad to do that. But all I can say about what you're saying is I did deliberately what I intended to do, and that, that, that's all I can say. Some other time I'd be glad to talk about 1915 and whether it was a genocide. My own feeling, incidentally, is that the problem, well, I won't go into that for 1915. Somebody else is a... Okay. Hi, my name is Fero Fırat. I'm from Mush, you can see uh, I am Kurdish. And uh, you give percentage of uh, Armenians uh, and 25% of population uh, are here, yeah. all region. My question is very simple one. Where is the, those people, 25% of population? Well, unfortunately, you, you once again are going to 1915, right? You, you see, you keep on wanting to get me to drag Let's, let's put it simple. It is impossible, no matter what parliaments say and no matter what people that are propagandists say, it is impossible to consider detailed historical questions with short, quick answers. There is a genocide, there isn't a genocide. It's not that way. And if you ask me, what happened to people in 1915? Well, for God's sake, read my books. Listen to other talks, but don't expect me to give you five hours of discussion here. When I, where are my books? I suggest if you want to find where my books are, I suggest try the British Library. Justin, you, you, can, you can answer his question. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Well, Professor McCarthy has has answered your question. So I'm going to go ahead, the lady here. Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. McCarthy. My name is Sun Sabas. I'm Iraqi Turkmen representative in London. I really enjoyed your lecture, and I hope the rest of the, uh, my colleagues, they enjoyed it as well. Um, I'm just uh, thinking that all these uh, reports that have, they have been, depending on the machinery's report, while they are just, um, well, uh, these conflicts, which the superpowers, they depend on to put more pressure on Turkey. So whenever they want to, to put more pressure, they use it as to declare or they um, identify that this massacre happened in that time. But while uh, they uh, turn their eyes blind, what's happening in uh, Nicaragua, Karabakh, in Azerbaijan, which just happened recently, and on, uh, everybody uh, knows what's happening in there, but just they turn their eyes blind, and not seeing that what's happening there, but they do uh, uh, depend on the machinery report to uh, not, not what's happening in the in, in 80s, 19. That's really um, uh, double standing, and, and uh, um, it's uh, put uh, in, our, uh, in front of us one thing that I think Turkey, they have to form a commission uh, to start to have independent indiv investigation in that area, what happened in there, 
rather than uh, depending on the European or American what they will decide to what happened at that time. So it is putting pressure on Turkey to start to form this commission and to, uh, to ask others to join them. Either they, if they like to have to have international independent commission, they will come to join or they just refuse and they had identified what Turkey decide. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. McCarthy. I, I want to reiterate that all of these questions will only benefit from commissions, from studies, from all sides getting together and going over these topics. Hopefully, without screaming at each other, because that doesn't really solve any problems at all. Thank you. Okay. Couple more. One here, and then the lady here. Go ahead. Can we have the microphone down here, please? Here. Yes. Um, hello, I'm. Hello, I'm Grant. Um, I'm studying at Oxford, um, and I'm just curious if you could comment. Uh, you've talked a lot about different sources and unreliable sources. So I'm curious if you can comment on where your sources are from. And <laughs> because I'm, I mean, I, I'm sympathetic as much to the Turkish side in the issue as, as many of the people here. But I, I'm somewhat skeptical at saying we should, deriding something because it's an Armenian source, like you said the missionaries were getting. Um, as much as I am against deriding something because it's just the Turkish side. No, I, so I, I, I agree with, I'm, I'm, are you done? I'm just curious yeah. about your methodology. No, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to say, of course, you realize I was not writing about here about what happened. The sources I use when I write about what happened include Armenian sources. And I agree, agree with you completely that no one set of sources is to, you know, to be uh, avoided. You should try to study everything you can from every source. And I think in my writings, I think if you look, you'll find that I have tried to do that. Uh, not necessarily successfully. I can't use Georgian sources very well because I don't understand them. And I, I don't even understand the people in Georgia and America, much less in that. The, I, I try not to do that. What I was saying here is that these are only one source. They're orchestrated source. I believe they come from the Hunchak party. Now, but I did make a, make a point of saying this is just an impression of mine, that I couldn't prove that. And I definitely mean that. I wasn't talking today about what I believe to be true. What I was talking about was specifically the bad sources that are used when an assertion is made. I would suggest that to study this, we look at the investigation committees, both the Ottoman and the European ones, and we use those as the basis of our investigation because they're the only people that actually study. I notice I'm saying we take the evidence of Turks, Kurds, Armenians, <coughs> Europeans that studied, and the Ottoman government. So my suggestion would be those, and I might add that I'm actually writing a book on that. So you'll get to see whether I'm using the sources or not. What are those sources, though? The, the, the investigation committees that actually looked at what happened, the, uh, which the European advisors, the three that I mentioned, but also the Ottoman Commission itself, and the report that the Ottoman Commission made. I mean, those are the things, because it's like in a court, you want people that actually investigated the story, not just people that come up and say, I heard from a friend, you heard from a friend, you heard from a friend. The history we have now is written on those, I think, very bad sources. I think we should rely on those that actually interviewed the people who were there, that actually went to the places to see what happened. That's my point. And uh, while, while I didn't do that here, I, I must admit, I'm, I'm not going as quickly as I'd like to on the book, but eventually, We'll get done with that, and you'll be able to see. And then you'll be able to judge, and you should. You should look at my work and see whether I have used all the sources I should. You're acting exactly as a historian should in asking that question. Huh? But you've got to apply that to everybody. I was given yesterday, just to look over very briefly, a report made by, uh, what was the name of the? the yeah, I'm not saying. I looked at that, and if you look at the footnotes, you realize that every single one is a book written in English by someone who is tied to a certain side of the issue, and not a single opposing view is considered. That's wrong. 
And if I do that, take me to task, give me trouble, 